Yes, it's another day. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure thou were created. That means all power, all glory, all adoration is belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not here to preach ourselves, but to preach the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like to just read out Psalm, Psalm 1, the Psalm of David. He said, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, no stands the way of sinners, no sin is no sin in the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his Lord does he, does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that being for his fruit in season, his leaf shall not, shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. The ungodly are no so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand the judgment, nor sin of the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord now is of the, of the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's really, before I go into the message, it's going to be about rules. But before I go into the message, I would like to remind myself and remind you that this psalm actually is, is, is the fulfillment to Peter. Is a picture of Peter because Peter actually followed Jesus apart and then he's standing among the people when they set up a fire he was standing by them and then in a court and then he sit down by the fire which was made by the enemy of Jesus Christ so in a sense Peter was standing was walking standing and sitting with the people who were about it to pass judgment or crucify the Lord Jesus Christ so just to remind us that we may sometimes fail and a fall for like a Paul, like Peter did. But I would like to share a, a few thoughts as usual about it. this remarkable woman, uh, Ruth. There's only two books in the, in the Bible which been uh, uh, the headline is a, is a woman, like Esther and Ruth, which is written by, by, by women. And here in Ruth, chapter one, and we've got only four chapters in, in Ruth. Chapter one is love resolved. Chapter two, chapter two is love. Uh, uh, um, uh, chapter one is love resol uh, resolved. Chapter two is love responded. Chapter three is love uh, requested. In chapter four, love is rewarded. And here, in a time of judges, when Elimelech, Elimelech means uh, my my God is king, and uh, Naomi means uh, pleasure. And uh, Elimelech, uh, in a time of judges, was there was famine in in in, uh, in, in Holy Land in Jerusalem. They went to uh, Moab and they went there for, for a search of bread and to find uh, probably a better life. And there, uh, Elimelech with his two sons stay in, in, in Moab for about 10 years. So Elimelech died and then uh, Naomi uh, was left alone with his two sons, Mahlon and Kilion. And I just wonder why um, Elimelech means my God is king and Naomi means a, a, a pleasure. I don't understand how come they name Mahlon to one of their sons and Kilion because Mahlon means sickness and Kilion means wasting. So we as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that the Bible, especially the biblical uh, name in the Bible, all have a meaning. And we have to be careful even today in this age and time, we have to be careful of the name we gave to our children. As the son or daughter, we have to be very careful. For example, nobody will call their, their, their sons by the name of Judah because of the reputation Judah betrayed Jesus Christ. Because of that, I never heard anybody call the, 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 the name of their son uh, uh, Judah because of that uh, you know, uh, betrayal of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, I just, I just wonder because Elimelech means uh, my God is king. I just wonder how come Elimelech give the name Mahlon, which means sickness, and uh, Kilion, which means the wasting to their son. And uh, then when Elimelech died, uh, we are told in verse 3 and 4 that uh, uh, Elimelech died and then uh, uh, they, may, they stay in the land of Moab for 10 years and Mahlon got married with the, by the name of woman Ruth and Kilion by the name of Orpa. And then after these 10 years, uh, in the period of these 10 years, Mahlon died as well and Kilion died as well. So Naomi was left alone by herself with two with two of her daughter-in-law, uh, Orpa and uh, uh, Ruth. And then uh, uh, Naomi heard that in the land, in the promised land, in, uh, in, in Jerusalem, in Canaan, there was uh, bread. And then he, she said to her two daughter-in-law, I need to go back to my country, I need to go back to my people. And uh, then they said, we're gonna follow you and we're gonna come with you. Then uh, Naomi said unto her two, two daughter-in-law, go return each to her mother's house the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Now, before I really give you the deep details, first, 
For example, the book of Ruth was written 1,300 years before Jesus Christ was born. And the book of Ruth is rich in kindness, patience, love, and faith. And here, uh, the, the, the book of Ruth was, was one of the five scrolls which, which was read out in, in, during the feast, especially the feast of the weekend, of, of the weeks. So here we are told that uh, when Naomi and came back to Jerusalem, it was in a time of the barley harvest. But you see, Naomi said to his, her two daughter-in-law, return to your God, return to your people, return to your land, and uh, I'm going to go back to my own people and my own God and my own, you know, uh, uh, land. But you see, they refused. But eventually, Orpah gave up. Orpah refused and kissed her uh, mother-in-law, Naomi, but Ruth, by faith, she activated her faith. She remained with, uh, with Naomi. In verse 16, chapter 1, verse 16, what, what Ruth said to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, but death, but only death can separate me and you. So Ruth cleaved to his master-in-law, and she followed Naomi to Jerusalem. Now, before I go further, I would like to share with you there's three types of women in the Bible. Now, many people may not agree with me, but I believe through my careful study in, in the Bible, I came to the conclusion that there's three types of women in the Bible. The first one is the Jezebel type woman, or Delilah type woman, which is their thirsty for the blood of the saints. They want to destroy our future. They want to destroy our finance, destroy our marriage, our relationship. The Delilah type spirit represents the world. Jezebel type spirit, again, represents the world. And the world hates the church because the church is a secret government on earth. Therefore, the devil is trying very hard to use Jezebel type women or Delilah type women to destroy the foundation of our faith, which is the church. Bear in mind, the church is not a building. The church is a community of people of any nation, any nationality, any color with my due respect, and any language. Therefore, the primary purpose of the devil is to break the church, to break it down, create denomination, create division, and then he wants to create the, destroy the marriage. That's a Jezebel type woman or Delilah type woman as Delilah did to Samson. Samson was blinded physically and spiritually because he was following his feeling. Now, the, the, the next type woman is Deborah type woman. Now, I'm sure many people will disagree on that, but I believe that Deborah type woman, God used Deborah as a rebuke to men because in the time of judges, God couldn't find any men, therefore he had to choose a woman to rebuke to men. And we have a best example today in our society. This trust, God bless her soul. I believe the queen before her, before her death, 72 hours before she passed away, she elected Liz Truss. But you see, I believe that Liz Truss is the rebuke like Deborah type woman to men because in a conservative party, Johnson, uh, Boris Johnson failed miserably. He couldn't deliver his, his promise. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't deliver his promise and he said, uh, he lied to us. Therefore, he put him down and he raised Liz Truss as a rebuke to men. That's a type two. And the third type, I believe that is the godly woman. A godly master, a godly sister. We have example like Ruth. We have example like uh, Esther. We have example like uh, uh, Sarah, like Rachel, Lee. We have like Hannah. We have many of them. Martha, Mary. You know the Mary of Jesus, Master of Jesus as well. So here we have a godly woman, which especially can be described in Proverbs chapter 31. And here a godly master tell to his son, "My son is no good for a prince. My son is no good for a king to drink a strong drink. Otherwise, you're gonna get drunk." and you become foolish and you forget the wisdom of God. So here we got a godly master, a type woman that God is pleased with him. And here I believe that uh, 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 Naomi as well and Ruth were uh, a virtue woman, uh, a, a, a type woman, godly woman, and God tr using them to, to, to fulfill his plan and his purpose here on earth. So we are told when they came to, to the land of uh, Canaan, uh, Naomi said to the people, Call me no Naomi, but call me what Mara. Mara means bitterness. 
So he said, from Naomi, pleasure to bitterness. Why? Because I went out full hand and I came back empty hand. So the, the Lord deal with me, uh, had afflicted me. The Almighty have afflicted me. Therefore, Naomi changed her name from Naomi to Mara. This was, my friend, we have to be careful what we name. What name we give to our children? What name we give to ourselves if you want to change your name by the definition, by, by, by the divine uh, appointment from God as he did to me? Now we are told that when Naomi came to the, to the city, the city where really came out and meet Naomi and Ruth. So here what I like really about Ruth, as I said, the book of Ruth is rich in example of, of kindness, uh, patience, faith, and love. And here Ruth, I don't know because 10 years, probably in a period of 10 years, uh, married to Mahlon, I believe that she came to the knowledge of the true living God. That's why Orpa refused. Orpa means the, a young deer or means the neck. So Orpa refused. She went back to her own people, her own God and her own country. But Ruth, I believe that is where God activated her faith. And by faith, she had hope in this situation. Uh, okay, I'm going to a strange land. I'm going to a strange people. I'm going to a people which I don't know. But at least I know someone by the name of, of Naomi, which is my mother-in-law. So by faith, she activated and she had hope when she followed uh, Naomi to Jerusalem. And here what we see, he said, whether you go, I will go. When you die, I will die. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And I will never leave you. But death may part me and you. Then when Naomi knew that she cannot persuade Ruth, she gave up and they came to the promised land. And chapter 2, we are told that Naomi had a kinsman by the name of Boaz. Boaz means strength. And Boaz, I believe, if we study, Boaz was a righteous man. Even so, he was rich, but he was a righteous man. And Ruth, in chapter 2, and Ruth said to, uh, uh, and Ruth, the Moabites, said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of the corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. So you see, we are introduced to the grace of God. Here by faith, Ruth have uh, hope that she is saying to her mother-in-law, let me go to the field and I will find grace in the sight of man who's going to help me or allow me to, to plug the, uh, to, to glean the, the ears of the, of the wheat from among the sheep. And Naomi said to her, go my daughter, uh, go and God be with you. And then we are told that in chapter 2 verse 4, and behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord be blessed thee. And then said Boaz unto his servant, that was said over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant said, it is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Then said Boaz unto Ruth. That's what I like about Boaz. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, he said, uh, here is thou not my daughter. You see, he called uh, Ruth my daughter. That's twice in, in this book, uh, 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 Boaz called Ruth my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from Hannes, but abide here fast by my, by my maiden. Then he said in verse 10, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace? in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me seeing I am a stranger you see Ruth was introduced to the grace of God that's what I believe that Ruth was already a believer already had the faith in a God of Israel in a God of Naomi that's why he said my Lord what is it me be a stranger here I found grace with you so here grace means my friend God reached at Christ's expense grace means we don't deserve what we have it but God will give it anyway. Grace is an earned an 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 favor or unmerited favor. So here Boaz, by faith, showing grace to Ruth, which is a Moabitish. Uh, I don't know what's by now, but Boaz knows that Ruth was a believer. So he called, Ruth called Boaz, my Lord. And he said, and how thou hast left thy father and thy master, Boaz said to, to Ruth, I have heard that uh, you have lost, you have left your father and your master, the land of your nativity, and art come out uh, unto the people which thou now not. Then the Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given to thee 
of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. Now Boaz is trying to introduce uh, 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 the Elohim, Yahweh, to, to Ruth and said, now you came, you left with your God, your people, your country, and you came to a land which you, uh, under the mighty hand of God on, who, on whom thou shalt trust. And then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, so I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. So what do I now hear? Ruth actually, physically, by faith, he proposed marriage to, 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 to Boaz. He said, do not treat me like an as a servant you have, especially the female servant. Handmaiden means the fe female servant. He said, do not treat me. He called her, she called Boaz my Lord, as Abraham, uh, Sarah was calling Abraham my Lord. And here he, she is activating her faith and Boaz answering uh, about by saying, my daughter, from now on, you're going to drink from the vessel. You're going to eat with us. And he commanded all the men in, in, in the field that they cannot touch uh, uh, Ruth because she is a virtue woman. And here we are told how uh, Ruth actually uh, said to Boaz, you have right to redeem me. And we know that is the type. Boaz means strength and Boaz is a type of Christ. As Boaz redeemed Ruth, Jesus Christ has come to redeem man, sinful man like me and you, by his precious blood, dying on the cross, by his suffering, many sons, by his death, many daughters have been reconciled to the Almighty God through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are told in chapter 3, uh, love uh, requested. Now here's then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Now Naomi said to Ruth, Now I have to seek rest for you. Now I have to find the husband for you. Because even he said, before they came back to the city, he said, even if today I have a husband and bear a son, are you going to wait for me until my sons grow up? And that's why Oprah refused. He gave up, she gave up her hope and went back to her own people. But Ruth, by faith, followed Naomi. And here we have been told that Naomi said to, uh, and Naomi said to her, uh, her daughter-in-law uh, that we have Boaz is our kindred. Uh, with whose maiden is thou hast behold he we know is barley tonight in the threshing flower so here and uh, actually Naomi said one of the um, custom in a Jewish culture that if a woman lay down by your feet at night in your place that woman seeking to get married with you so Naomi is preparing Ruth he said now Boaz is preparing in a special flower, is preparing and he's going to eat and he's going to drink. So when, in, when he goes to mark his, his place where he's going to lay down, and I want you to go lie down by his feet and uh, uh, draw the, uh, the garment which is on him and cover your feet. And when he discover, then he will know what you want and he's going to grant you your wishes. So here we are told, and then uh, Naomi said, it shall be when he lies down. Exactly. That, what's thy cell? Verse 3 for us. Chapter 3, verse 3. He said to uh, Ruth, Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the flower, but make no thyself now unto the man, until he shall they have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lays down, thou shalt mark the place where she, he, sh he shall lie, and thou shalt go in, and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell you what thou shalt do. So here it was a custom in the Jewish culture. So uh, Ruth uh, uh, listened to his, uh, her mother-in-law. She went and she found uh, when uh, Boaz got drunk, uh, Boaz lay down in, his, uh, in the floor. And then we are told in verse 8, And it came to pass at the midnight that the man was afraid, and they turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art uh, a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than the, at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether the poor or rich. So here we are told that even in the middle of night, a uh, Boaz called uh, uh, Ruth my daughter. I mean, I wonder if today in our society a woman ends up in your flood in the middle of night. 
and you are by yourself, how are you gonna treat that woman? And I believe that Ruth was beautiful because Ruth means beauty. So Ruth was very beautiful and probably uh, uh, Boaz was a bit older because uh, you know he said, now I found that you are a virtuous woman because you have no gone after a, a young man with the poor or rich. So here we, we have got the glimpse that uh, Boaz probably was older than, than, than Ruth. And then uh, we are told, uh, we have to finish it because the, the take of time. Now we are told that in chapter four, uh, the, the love was rewarded to, 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 to Ruth. And here we are told, uh, he says, now he said, before chapter 4, Bawa said to Ruth, uh, I am your kinsman, yes, but says, and it's the kinsman which is closer to you than me. So I'm going to promote what this uh, piece of land that Naomi has. If she buys, if he buys the land, then he have to redeem you as well. But if he not there, it's my choice and it's my time to redeem you. So here, Boaz in chapter four, is collecting about 10 elders of the city and telling them that Naomi has come home from the, the country of Moab and uh, uh, we got some land, he got, she got some land, she went to, to sell it. And he said to Zan Kinsman, you have the right to redeem the land. And, uh, and he said to him, and I sought to advertise, he saying, buy it before the inhabitant and before the elders of my people. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, uh, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, the day you redeem the land, you have to uh, take Ruth, the Moabitish, who came back with Naomi, in order to raise up the name of the dead among the inheritance, that the name of the dead will not vanish away. Then the man refused. He said, I cannot do that because it's going to mar my own inheritance. Then Boaz said, now it is my right because I'm the next king in the line. Then I have the right to redeem the land from Naomi. And from that day, he redeemed the land. He said, I'm going to take Ruth, the Moabitish, who was the wife of Mahlon, came back with Naomi. Therefore, the people in the community said, May the Lord bless Ruth as he has blessed Rachel and Lee, and let uh, the, 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 the house of Israel will be famous like the time of Tamar. Uh, Judah was uh, buried in a son by Pharaoh. Uh, uh, Pharaoh, yeah, Pharaoh was uh, a son uh, of Pharaoh, and then he says, uh, Pharaoh. Uh, they saw the communities, they blessed uh, Ruth and then uh, Boaz went in and uh, Ruth became a wife of Boaz and we are told that Boaz bear a son by the name of Obed. So here we got the genealogy that the Lord Jesus Christ came from this woman, Ruth, the Moabitish. So you see how our God elevate women to the point that the Messiah, the promised seed of the woman in the Garden of Eden, the promised Messiah will come from the uh, from the from the this Moabitish woman by the name of Ruth. And here it says, now this other generation of Pharaohs, Pharaohs begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat uh, Nation, Nation, and Nation begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot what? David. So here we go, my friend. From this uh, fourth chapter of Ruth, we are told that our God is the God of male and female. He's the God of both men and women. Here we got the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ from Salmon to, uh, to Boaz and Boaz to uh, Obed and Obed to Jesse and Jesse to David. So you may ask me, preacher, where did um, Jesus Christ can be a type of Boaz? Yes, my friend. The Bible says, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, Boaz was rich and a wealthy man, but Boaz was a righteous man.